In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can install the Active Directory Domain Controller, also known as ADDS and sometimes referred to as just Domain Controller, on Windows Server 2022 Data Center Edition. On my previous video, I have gone over the initial configuration of a server and if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link in the description as well as a card on the top right hand corner. So you should go ahead and check that out. So assuming you have done the initial configuration on your server, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the start menu and we're going to open server manager. And on the left hand side, we're going to go into local server. As you can see, I have already done the initial configs. For example, we have the server name set up. I have static IP addresses assigned and et cetera, et cetera. So if you haven't done those things, please go ahead and do it. And if you need some help with that, again, I have already posted a video on my YouTube channel. You can go and check it out. To install Windows Active Directory Domain Controller, on a Windows Server 2022, the process is exactly same. In fact, it is the same as the the one we are going to do. We have done in Windows Server 2019. Microsoft has done a great job of not changing much when it comes to the point uh, the process of installing domain controllers. So in here, what we're going to do, we're going to go into Manage from the top right hand corner, and we're going to choose the option called add roles and features. So when you open up the add roles and features, you'll get this familiar add roles and features wizard. And we're going to click next. And in here, we're going to select the option called the role base or feature base installation. As opposed to the other option, which is the remote desktop services installation. The reason why we are picking the role base or feature based installation, because it allows us to install the Active Directory domain controller in this local server. So basically we are configuring a single server by adding roles or role services and features to this particular machine. So what we want to do is that option and we're going to select that and we're going to click next. And in here, they will list the servers available to you. So right now we are installing in this server. So we have that server listed here, which is the SS Serve 2022. That's what I have naming. It's already selected and we're gonna click next. And in here, we're gonna pick the option called the Active Directory Domain Services. So we're gonna pick the one called the Active Directory Domain Services. So right here, this one. So the other options such as Active Directory Federation uh, Services, Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, uh, Active Directory Certificate Services, those are some items that I will describe in my future videos. But what we are interested in right now is the Active Directory Domain Services because that is the domain controller that we want to install on this server. And when you select that one, as you can see, it'll give you a pop-up and the pop-up will have add roles and features wizard. And I would recommend that you keep this one checked, which is the include management tools if applicable. And I would recommend that you select the option called add features. There may be situations that you may want to remove certain features in here, but in 99% of the time when you are installing domain controllers in Windows, we're gonna simply select add features in this option. And then we're gonna click next. And we are not going to select anything in here because we are not going to add any uh, features in here. But you can if you are choosing to do so. But for now, we are simply installing the domain controller. So we're going to leave this as it is and we're going to click next. It'll give you some information about the Microsoft Cloud Services, such as Azure Active Directory right here. Uh, you can read it over. There are some information related to that, but as a new uh, you know system administrator or a student this is not something that we are interested in so we're simply going to go next and in here i always select the option called restart the destination server automatically if required the reason for that is this will, this will ensure that anytime a component of this server is installed and that component is properly installed and if the restart is needed, that server uh, installation process will take care of that. So I'm going to select restart the destination server automatically if required. 
and it's going to give you a warning saying if a restart is required this server restart automatically without any additional notifications in other words there won't be any warnings there won't be any pop-up there won't be any user interactions so it will just simply restart itself so because of this they're going to give you a warning and they'll say do you really want to allow that automatic restart and i'm going to say yes here and as long as you don't have active users connected to this server in this case i don't and in most situations because you are installing the domain controller for the first time you probably won't have any uh, users connected to this uh, picking this option restart destination server automatically free cred should not create any issues however if you are doing this in an active environment in production environment th there may be services currently already running on this server you may want to not check this thing off because the, it may impact your uh, end users and you may want to do the restart in a, at a later time so once i have picked that option i'm going to click the install button right here and it'll take a few minutes uh, depending on how fast your computer uh, and how fast your internet connection is and after a while it will complete the installation and give you a message so as you can see the installation process now has been completed and we did not have to reboot or restart this server to complete that process so that's perfect now you have the option on this screen where you can click on this thing called promote this server to a domain controller because right now what happened was we installed the role of Active Directory domain controller in this Windows Server 2022 but we haven't actually configured this server as a domain controller yet so we have the software packages installed but we haven't created the domain controller so you have the option of clicking this one so if you click on that it will get you to the Active Directory domain services configuration wizard uh, but if you accidentally uh, forgot to click on this and accidentally close this thing not to worry what you need to do actually go to the top corner here and it'll, you'll see this yellow uh, triangle and if you click on this and you'll see the same option here promote this server to a domain controller the reason for that is this server now knows that it has the packages to run a domain controller but you haven't configured that as an administrator so it will have that yellow triangle so if you accidentally close the installation wizard you can reopen it from the top right hand corner right here and see it will get you the same place so in this active directory domain services configuration wizard uh, we will be uh, creating a uh, uh, you know new um, um, domain so new uh, domain controller so we won't be using the option called add domain control to an existing domain because there are no existing domains here i will go through how we can interconnect different servers or a server to another domain in a separate video because we are creating a brand new one we're going to create the option uh, we're going to select the option called add a new forest so this option so it's going to ask you what's going to be your root domain name so for me my root domain name going to be sanuja.local so my root domain i selected sanuja.local but if you have a domain name for your company that domain name will be the one that you will be using for your domain root domain name right here so this is in a lab environment laboratory environment so i'm going to use sanuja.local the local domain and then we're going to click next and on the next page uh, you will have some information at the top where you can configure your forest the functional forest level and the domain functional level and few other options available to you underneath it so when it's come to the point the compatibility of your active directory domain controller or the in this case what we call also known as the domain controller you can select what kind of functional levels that you would like to go with at the forest and domain functional levels for example if i drop down this menu we have options of windows server 2016 2012 all the way to 2008 say uh, so if you pick a different level in here you would also may be able to pick a different level here but if you are installing this in a brand new environment uh, on a windows server 2022 i would not 
change this value to anything lower than the highest value you can get. So right now it is Windows Server 2016 is the forest uh, functional level and the domain functional level maximum we can go. And I will leave that as it is because I'm not concerned about compatibility issues here. And we're gonna have this domain name uh, system, DNS server, uh, checked off. Uh, the reason why we make it uh, that thing checked off because that will ensure that this uh, server will have all the components needed to run the DNS because this is gonna be our primary domain controller for our lab environment. Underneath here, we have the type, uh, the, the directory services mod or DSRM password. This password is going to be the administrative password for your domain controller. It will be your admin password for the administrative account, domain administrator account, as well as the domain controller account. So I'm gonna uh, put uh, my password here. So you can create whatever the password you like. And I recommend you creating a strong password here and make sure you remember this password because remember this is going to be your administrative password for your Active Directory domain controller. And we're going to click next and it's going to ask you whether they should specify the DNS delegation options. I usually say yes, you know, create that DNS delegation whenever it is possible to select that. So right now you can, you see that in here it says a delegation for DNS server cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. And you can read about that. But if there's option to create it, I would always select that. So right now we're just gonna skip that. And now what the server gonna do, it's gonna start installing uh, certain configurations and they will ask you whether you would like to change the NetBIOS domain name. NetBIOS is a Windows specific uh, domain names that are used in certain environments uh, for communicating between servers and end clients. And in this situation, I just gonna leave the uh, default uh, the, uh, NetBIOS domain name, in this case, Sanuja. So what the, what the configuration we said done, it took the sanuja.local and just dropped the .local part to create the NetBIOS name. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is because that's good enough for me. And we're gonna click next. And for most of you, uh, leaving the NetBIOS name as the default gonna be fine because it shouldn't create any conflict if you don't have, uh, especially any other, uh, you know, servers installed with the same exact domain name configuration. So in here we have the parts to all the database files. Again, I'm gonna leave them as default, but you do have the option to clicking on here and selecting a different location. But if you choose to do so, make sure that you know where you located those files. I typically leave it in the default location again, just to keep it easier for future troubleshoot. Again, you can change these databases and these databases such as SysWall is a very important database for ADDS, the Active Directory Domain Controllers. And uh, just make sure that you know where they are if you decided to change the default location. So I'm gonna leave it as default location. I'm gonna click next. And right here, it'll give you a summary. So this is gonna be a summary of review uh, options that we have selected. You can review them before you, uh, you know, in start installing. You can also view the scripts right here if you click on it. Uh, and for now, everything looks good for me. So just make sure everything is good for you as well before you clicking the next and start uh, installing. So we're gonna click next. That will go into the prerequisite check. So what the server is right now doing is it's gonna check all the components associated with this server and checking that against the requirements needed to install the applications and uh, roles and features that we have selected during the Active Directory Domain Services uh, configuration we said uh, uh, previous pages. So this might take a little while depending on how fast your computer or the server components are. So in here, you can see there are a few uh, warning messages uh, that came up. Uh, these are not uh, that critical in this situation. So if the, it is 
uh, still possible for me to go ahead and install it but if you get a critical error which will have a red mark in here uh, you need to make sure that you fix those things before you can install it so for now for me all prerequisite has been passed successfully these are just warnings these are not actually errors uh, so i can go ahead and install it so now what we need to do is click install and that will go ahead through the process of installation of Active Directory Domain Controller and eventually this server should restart or ask you to log out and it will reboot and boot, boot into the domain connected environment. So it will take a little while again depending on how fast your computers are, uh, your server components are, it might take a few minutes uh, and it will take a little longer depending on the hardware configurations. So the installation process has been completed. Now it's gonna auto restart. So it's gonna say you're about to sign out and I can close this one. And the computer itself, the server itself should automatically restart, just like that. So once the restart has been completed, you should be able to log in with the domain administrative account. Remember the passwords and usernames that we have created during the domain installation process. So you should be able to uh, log in. So right now it says Sanuja slash administrator. What that means is basically I will be logging into the domain administrator, not the administrator of the Windows server's local administrator account, but I will be using the domain administrator account because we have sanuja slash because remember my domain is sanuja.local so if you don't see this you can go to other users option and you can enter sanuja um, slash administrator or whatever the, your domain name administrator so we're going to enter the password here press enter so right now i just logged in to the windows server with the domain administrator account and if you go to the server manager we should by default automatically open and if it doesn't open you can go to the start and you can search for windows server manager and open it and then on if you go to the right hand side of the server manager right here you will see now i have created the sanuja.local uh, domain right here so it's showing right here so that's how you install the Active Directory Domain Controller on Windows Server 2022. As you can see, it is very similar to that of the Windows Server 2019. Very little has changed. I created this video because just in case somebody searching for this specific information, now you have access to that. On my free future videos, I will go through how you can connect a Linux as well as a Windows machine to Windows Server 2022 domain that we have created here. Until next time, good luck with your exams and everything and have a nice day.